Well, on Measure Valley Hoops, we like to talk about offense, but before we talk about that, I want to ask you about your four-game winning streak and your big win over first place Drake last week. Things seem to be coming together for you, and, and your team has been playing with expectations like you thought they would. Well, what we wanted to make sure that we accomplished in these last four games is the fact that we were not really happy with how we were playing on the road. We always felt like Sundays we didn't play real well. We always felt like we competed in that uh, Friday game but didn't always come out on top. So we just wanted to make sure that we kept working hard and kept getting better and that things would eventually come. And, and obviously, you know, against Drake, uh, things came together. Diana Pierre doing a lot of the similar things she did for you last year. Leads the league in rebounding, best offensive rebounder, best field goal percentage. Leads the league in double-doubles. She's been fantastic around the inside. How has her game evolved a little bit away from the basket? Well, I think the thing with Diana is the fact that we can move her out if we need to. But honestly, we try to keep her in the paint because she's so solid down there. But what's been best for Diana is the fact that everyone around her is better. And I think that's what's helped her game. When you start talking about everybody around her being better, Cindy, you've got a couple of really good guards that can score it, they can defend, they have great on-ball pressure. Talk about your perimeter game around Diana. Well, it starts with Rashonda Napier, who is our point guard and uh, can put up really big numbers, and she's a real scrappy guard, just really high basketball IQ. Cartasia Macklin is another young lady that's just playing really hard, always has to guard, you know, one of the toughest kids on the other team, and and still putting up good numbers. And then Kylie Gablehausen, a freshman, uh, just a terrific shooter. So uh, we've be, we'll been able to compliment her. And then you can't leave out Asia Washington because Asia can shoot outside. She can shoot inside. And actually, Asia has probably been our steadiest player. How much more fun has it been this year coaching this group of kids? You waited for some of them to come back. You had a lot of injury last year. You've, you've been an impact team in the Missouri Valley race, which we expected that you would be. I thought from the very beginning of the year that you would definitely have a say over who wins the league and who could win the conference tournament. How do you feel about where your team sits right now with all the pieces coming together? Well, I like where we sit because I feel like when you get in those top four spots, you control your own destiny now instead of having to want somebody to lose or, uh, you know, knowing that you got to knock off certain teams. But there's still a lot of to uh, games left, as I mentioned, and you know, we can't get overexcited. We like where we are, uh, but to, gosh, we've got a really tough uh, road weekend ahead of us. Uh, we got to take care of business, uh, but I, I love this team. I, they really have embraced what we want. Uh, they're following the game plans. They're spending that extra time in the gym. Uh, they're doing extra time on video, so they're doing all the things that you want to, out of your players. Cindy, you have coached at the highest level in a lot of different places, and I know you understand the game inside out, but you also understand some of the things on the national scene that come with trying to position the Missouri Valley. What are some of the things that you think, because I ask this question just about weekly to all the coaches, what are some of the things the league can do to continue to position itself to make a run on the national scene? Well, as I have mentioned to you a couple times, I, you know, I think it's real big, you know, Wichita State and Drake are great teams. I mean, excellent teams. It's, and you look at what Drake's overcome with losing the Valley Player of the Year, and they're still, you know, going strong. I mean, Wichita State and Drake, uh, I'm disappointed that they're not getting top 25 votes. Um, and I'm not saying they're top 25. I think they can compete in the top 25. And I'm disappointed that we're not getting more people aware of those two outstanding programs uh, because they're doing great jobs. And you're not talking about the – mid-major poll. You're talking about the AP poll with an opportunity for them to be seen on another level. I, I always think about how can we give teams like Wichita State and Drake an opportunity to be visible at the next level. What do you think is a way for them to be able to position themselves so that they can represent the Valley and people can start talking about how good they are and how well coached those two teams are? Well, I think that what you have to look at is what they've been able to achieve. And you know, Wichita State taking Tennessee, who their number one seed, I mean, they took them wire to wire. In fact, if it wasn't for, you know, a, a certain call down at the end, it could have gone either way, that could have been a different game. And so you look at that, that kind of competitiveness, you look at what uh, Drake's been able to overcome uh, with losing to such a quality player in Kendall Clark. I mean, that's just outstanding, the coaching uh, that both of those two programs are doing and their capabilities, and, and they're peaking. 
There's a lot of good guard play in the league. Wichita State has some, Drake, Drake has some. You already mentioned a couple of your guards. I want you to break down Cat Mac a little bit for me because that's what I'm starting to call her because she's quick like a cat and she's the Mac in terms of understanding exactly what you want to have happen on your team. Break her deep game down a little bit. Well, I think the biggest thing you got to ask out of your guards is you want them to have the ability to get to the basket. You want them to have the ability to do the pull-up, Jay, and they've got to be able to shoot the three. When they can do those three things, uh, it is outstanding. And then you're also talking about, you know, the passing and making the easy pass. So many t guards try to thread the needle, and uh, those are risky passes in a lot of cases. So, uh, you know, we just ask them to, you know, really work hard on those three things. Make sure no one can stop you to the right, and if they do, you got a left hand move. Uh, and and uh, that's uh, C Mac. C Mac does all those things for us. Cindy, what year was it? when you achieved the greatest upset, maybe yes. the second greatest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. I think you got to give Louisville and Baylor maybe number one. They might have moved ahead of you when your Missouri team upset Georgia, who was number two, uh, number two seed. And what year was that with that great team? Uh, you know, I don't know what year that was. <laughs> I don't know. That was what, All I know is way too long ago. I love talking about that upset with you because I really do think that you are the architect of one of the greatest upsets in the history of the NCAA tournament. I don't think a lot of people look at it that way, but I certainly do. Um, what do you recall about that moment and one of those fond memories in your career? Well, I remember us being in Wisconsin, obviously, and, uh, you know, we had some great players. I mean, Amanda Lasser, you know, Evan Unrau, uh, Marlena Pep-Williams, I mean, uh, Karenza Barr. We had some great players in that uh, uh group so that helps and then obviously I felt like when we beat Wisconsin we were playing uh, at Georgia on uh, church Sunday so you know we were down there in the Bible Belt I felt like we were going to be okay because that gym's going to be empty everybody was going to be in the pews so I felt like we had a chance. Cindy because you've worked at other leagues and, and now you're back in the valley because you started in the valley and, and now you're back in the valley I've always looked at the Missouri Valley and the coaches in this league as coaches that were terrific execution X and O coaches. You didn't always get the McDonald's or the WBCA All-American kids, but you got kids that could get better, and you worked to get them better. And then you would take your teams, and, and you could see them improve over the course of the season because the coaching in the league is so good. How would you rate some of your peers? And I don't want you specifically, you know, have to, to break it down, but just overall the context of, Missouri Valley coaching at this level and why it's important for them to be really good to help the league? Well, I've always had great respect for the Valley, and I'm so happy to be a part of it because we do have great coaches. But I would tell you this, Debbie, it's not just great coaches. They're great teachers. And that's the biggest thing is that we have some great teachers in our coaching ranks. And, uh, man, every single game you just know you've got to be ready because you're going to see a lot of different stuff. Um, and that's what I've really enjoyed about the Valley. You can see the sun is shining on me, sort of like a halo, Cindy, and I know that that would be a nice uh, way for us to end you thinking about all the fond memories that we've had together as friends and things that we've done, and this beautiful sunlight shining over my head like it's angelic-like, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us this week with Measure Valley Hoops. This is Cindy Stein, the head coach for Southern Illinois. Cindy, a dear friend, I'm so glad your team has turned the corner and is doing great things and is actually a contender in the Missouri Valley to win the league. So best of luck to you and your team the rest of the season. And tell the kids I said hi. All right. Thanks for having me.